Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. On today's Put Your Face in the Torah, we're looking at verse 126 of Psalms 119. We're getting close to the end, and like I said, this study has blessed my heart in many, many ways. So let's go in, huh? It says here in verse 126, It is time for you, Lord, to work, for they have made void your law. It is time for you, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. You know, one of the the desires of the righteous is to see God's judgment fall when we see evil. And it should be. Evil should not reign, but it does. Wherever we see injustice, we cry out for the justice of God. And those that know God rejoice in his justice. Because he is a God that exercises loving kindness. And his justice is full of mercy. He does not give man what he deserves, at least at this point. But understand that there will come a time when God will rise up and his judgment shall fall heavily upon all the nations of the world. The Bible tells us in Psalms 111 verse 3, it says, well, you know what? I'm going to just read from verse 1. But verse 3 is the, the, uh, the featured verse here. I sought refuge in Yahweh. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to the hill? For behold, the wicked will thread a bow, and they will fix their arrow on the string in order to shoot it or to shoot with it at the upright in heart. Hmm. Why do they shoot, right? The upright of heart is... And they do it, watch this, they shoot at the upright in heart in the dark. Here it is. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Jehovah is in his holy temple. Jehovah is on his throne, and his throne is in the heavens. He, his eyes, watch this, his eyes see, his eyelids will examine the Son of Man. Jehovah tries the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one loving violence. He shall rain sneers on the wicked, fire and brimstone, and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For Jehovah is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. An upright look upon his face. So where do we look? Our look is upon the face of the Lord when we see injustice, because we want this to be fulfilled, the word of God. This is righteous. This is the eyes of the Lord. This is the amen, the faithful, the true witness of God. There is no other book upon the earth in which we can look into and see the justness of God. The straight, those who are righteous, love the justness of God, and they look with expectation. Now, let's go back to Psalms 119. It says, the time for you. Now, the word time here is very interesting because we see that it is made of two words, and it is the ayim, which we're studying, and here is the last letter, the tav. Together, it it means et. Now, the first letter is a picture of an eye, or perception, or the providence of God, and yet the last letter represents the monument of his perfection. All time belongs to God. He's the creator of it. I think of eternity in this way. Eternity has a place where there is no broken line in its existence. But yet God takes, to, oh, he took, uh, he, he created two slabs and put one on here and one over here. And he calls that space time. And this is where we live. This is where we do. And in within this time, we see because of the fall of Adam, evil has come upon the earth. The day that Adam and Eve uh, fell from their from their present state of glory and perfection, the earth have suffered the unrighteousness of evil. And so here he says that this is a time, an experience, an event. He says, now, O Lord, he's looking at his present situation and he sees the evil. And I don't know about you, but many times I have seen the evil and I said, God, move now. Now is the time to bring judgment. But as you know, God has a time for his judgment to move. We cannot dictate to God what he should do, but we can ask. 
Our petition is to ask God, and hopefully, with favor, He will answer us. There are times that we have to wait. I remember going through something that they did something horrible to me and my family, a minister, yes. And I waited and I prayed for five years. Lord, when will you vindicate me? When will you bring justice and justice to me because of what this person did? And about five to six years went by. It was about five, six years. I got a phone call in my office. And this, and this is the truth. I had been praying periodically about this vindication. And I got a phone call in my office from one of the ministers of the church that he, he was still there. And I haven't heard from him in that period of five to six years. And he told me, uh, he said, uh, are you sitting down? And I said, yes. He said, the time of your vindication has come. And he told me what happened. And so I was justified in the eyes of many because of the wrong that was done to me and my family. And I waited all those years. See, I wanted the justness of God now when it happened. I want you to move now. But God had a reason for, for, for me waiting to learn how to trust him, but also to expose the evil that was in that person. You see, God has a time of his judgment. So we can say, God, now is time because it is just for us to say, Lord, please bring justice now. But God has a time. He has a season. And he says, for you, Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is basically the name of God, which means self-existing. He doesn't need anyone to hold him up. His throne is his throne. There is nothing that we can do to, to bring it down or hold it up. You know, it's like we say, God, you know, I'm sorry for disappointing you. God is not disappointed when we do something wrong. He's not pleased with it, but he's not disappointed. God doesn't get disappointed. And so we have to understand that God is a self-existing God. He is the Yud, that tenth letter that represents self-existing, the hand of power, the, the origin of all power and the beginning of creation. God is that origin. He is self-existing. No one can hold him up. And so what's interesting is that when we look at, let's look at the, the, the letters of Yahweh. Okay, and, it, and it's basically this, is the Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. The Yud is the tenth letter. The He is the fifth letter. The Vav is the sixth letter. And then there's another He, which represents the fifth letter. When you put these letters in numeral value, it's 26. And what's interesting is that this name here actually represents the first letter, the Alpha, or the Aleph, which represents God, the strength, the strong one, the leader, the one that is mighty. And so we see that he is self-existing. And he's saying, God, you're the one that is self-existing. No one can exist like you. You are eternal. Your throne is holy. You are righteous. And I'm asking you now to move and let your justice come now. And that's the cry of the righteous. Now here, let me show you something about Psalms 9, 9 verse 19. Oh, arise, Jehovah, Yahweh. Let not man be strong. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Ha! The Ayim. What is it? He said, Lord, don't let the nations get away with the sin. Folks, there's coming a time when Jesus Christ will be revealed and he will come with his judgment. Even in Psalm, excuse me, in Revelations, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead of myself, Revelations 19, 11, it says, And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he sitting on him, excuse me, and he sitting on him was called faithful. In other words, he saw a white horse, the heavens open, and he saw him who was sitting on him as faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. Here goes the Ayim. And on his head, many crowns. And he had a name written, one that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed in a garment dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Notice. The heavens were open. There is movement upon a horse, which is war. But he is faithful and true. And it says that his righteousness brings judgment because he is the word of God. Now, it says on his head were many crowns. Let me share something with you about the crown of Christ in this situation. The word crown here in the Greek is, is what we call the diadem or the diamond. All right, the diadem. The diadem is the highest crown that anyone can receive. 
There is another crown called the Stephanos crown, but that Stephanos crown is given to the church for rewards. Like it is said about the 24 elders, they worship the Lord and they put their, their Stephanos crowns at his feet because they took their rewards, which represents the church, and put it at the feet of Christ. But here, the many crowns he has is the diadem crown because he is the king of all kings, and he is the Lord of all lords. And it is in the power of that diadem that he has all authority over all the kings of the, of the nations, over all the earth, that he's coming to judge. And watch this. He is, he, look, watch this. He, his, his robe is dipped in blood. In other words, what's coming is the judgment of the cross upon the world. He died for the sins of many, but there will come a time that that same sacrifice, the power of that sacrifice and the resurrection of Christ is going to come in judgment because they did not receive the blood of Christ for their redemption. Remember in, uh, in Genesis, we see something very special too. In chapter 22, verse 10, it says, And Abraham stretched out his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. We know that, that God asked Abraham to offer his son on Mount Moriah. And it says, And the angel of Jehovah called to him from the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only one from me. Now, I want to clear something here about the word when, or the phrase when God says, Now I know. Now, God is eternal. He knows everything. He knew that Abraham would do this. The word now is not representing that God is ignorant of a fact. It is talking about that now, this season, I want you to understand the power of my grace that is working in you to bring us to the place of total intimacy. What does that mean? By offering his son on, or willing to offer his son on Mount Moriah. Watch this. He shows him the point of grace that he's brought him to in life. Why didn't God ask that from the very beginning? Why didn't he just give him a son and ask it from the very beginning? Because Abraham was not ready to receive that order from God to be obedient to the judgment of God. God has a time for his judgment. And he called that place, watch this, I love it. Abraham called the name of that place, Yahweh will see. You know why? Because Moriah means God will see or God sees the provision Understand that God sees and he has a time. And so here he says, for you, O Lord, to work. The word work here in Psalms 119, verse 26, 126, remember, it says it is time for you, O Lord, to work. Is the word that we went over just a few uh, verses ago, asa. Asa means to perform, to squeeze together, to accomplish something. And so he is saying, Lord, now is the time for you to accomplish your word. Now is the time for your judgment to come. Now is the time for you to squeeze the nations, squeeze the evil, and bring your hand, your heavy hand of righteousness upon them. You see, he saw that the foundations of the righteous were being destroyed because of the evil. Because people walked away from the law, and we're going to see that in the next few words. But here, the word Asa is the making or the doing of anything. He says, I pray now that you, O Lord, now would do something about this situation. And a lot of times, my brothers and my sisters, we're going through things that we say, God, I need you to do for me now. I need you to act now. And sometimes if God would act now, we would miss the lesson. Sometimes by asking God to deliver us from a certain trial, we're actually asking him to deliver us from our growth. Every trial brings with it growth. Every trial brings with it a, 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 an opportunity to learn how to trust God, to look into his eyes and see that he is faithful and to stay faithful to the word of God no matter what happens. Because God has etched this word into the hearts of the righteous and it is that word that is open, and we see what God wants to do, but we have to be patient. It is time for you to asa. And let's look at the letters real quick. And we see here that the letters are ayim, the shin, or the again the, the sin, because here it, it is the S and not the SH, and the hey, to see the fire of God's grace and self-expression. It is providential. See, God, God is able to do whatever he wants, but sometimes he delays. As one Jew said, God will provide 
but if only he would provide until he provides. I think you, my wife said that to me this morning. We have certain things that we need, and she said, we need this, but if only he gives us this until he gives us that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so it is time for the Lord to squeeze, to perform, to make, for they have made void. Wow. They have made void. Here's the picture, watch this, of an open mouth and a head. And when you combine these, it is to open, open the head. <laughs> Can you imagine that? When we avoid, when we take the word of God and we are disobedient to this word, our head becomes open and void. Very much like in Genesis, that the earth became void. The earth was not void when God created it. The earth was whole. It became void of something. And we know that there may have been war in the heavens and God had to destroy the first earth. You can, you can search that for yourself. Many will disagree with that, but there are many scriptures that show that something happened in Genesis that it became waste. It became void. It became open. Everything became uh, uh, disfigured. It was distorted. And that's what happens when we do not pay attention to what God is saying in scripture. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's before we go there, I want to. Yeah, it talks about the grain of, a, of, of uh, the head of grains that are scattered on the threshing floor, and that's what happens to our life when we are disobedient to the word of God. We become scattered, we become disillusioned, we become void of the promises in our lives now. And you know what? There's a time for God to move, but He has a time. And his time is perfect. But watch this. The word para, which is here to make void, is the word, is the letter fe, which represents a mouth. That's the next letter coming that we're going to be studying. And it's a double resh, meaning a double head. Mm. You know, the Bible says in James that if we ask God uh, and we doubt, we're not going to receive anything from him. He says, because we're double minded, a double head. Two souls. It doesn't work. We have to be single-minded on the word of God. Jesus said, if your eye is sing signal, a single, if your eye is single, we have to have a single eye on the word of God, not move away from it. And so here he says, they have broken your law. You have broken your Torah. They have frustrated, watch this, the work of the Torah. They have been ineffectual in the work of the Torah. They have shattered and split and divided the truth of the Torah. He saw people's ways doing this, and he saw that it would become a tragic thing to the nation. And then Psalms 102 says, You shall arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to pity her. Yea, the set time has come. So again, God has a time. Even when Jesus said the time is to the Samaritan woman, the time is coming and the time is now. So there's a set time that God will bring his judgment and the work of his hand to squeeze the nations, to bring down the unrighteous. And watch this, to set up his foundation of righteousness in his church. He has a time. And even though people make the word of God void, watch this, because Jesus said to the, to the leaders of that day, by your tradition, you have nullified the word of God, meaning you have made it to none effect. And we can do that. We have the word of God. But if we do not walk in obedience, the word of God becomes of known. We make the word known, of, known, of none effect in our lives. It is nullified. And he says that they have made the Torah, the water, that which was supposed to refresh us and give us a straight hour so that we can hit the target. We make it void. Hallelujah. How do we know that this is so? Because we see for in 1 Samuel, and I'm almost finished here, Samuel was asked to go after King Saul was rejected. Samuel was asked to go to the house of Jesse because God was going to show him his anointed one. And you know what? His sons passed before the prophet. And it says here, and it happened as they came, he saw Eliab, one of the sons of Jesse, and said, surely Yahweh's anointed is before Yahweh. Wow. 
he looked upon him and he had a great high stature and he probably was a good looking man and he was powerful and strong. And look what, look what the Lord tells him. But Yahweh said to Samuel, do not look on his face nor on his height because I have refused him. For he does not see as man sees. Talking about God. God doesn't see as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but Jehovah Yahweh looks on the heart. Even the prophet was deceived by looking, by putting his physical ayim on the sight of his circumstances and said, this is the man. God says, no, you're looking through the physical eye. I see with the spiritual eye. And I'm telling you, this is not the man, the one you want is in the backside of the desert. Hallelujah. If you're in the backside of the desert and you say, God, nothing is going right in my life. I don't know what I'm going to do, what's happening. God knows you're at the backside of the desert. You just keep doing what he tells you to do. Be faithful and take care of his sheep. Take care of his business. And God will, uh, God will exhort you in due time. Don't look through your own ayim. Look through the ayim of God. And get in his word and see what God would do in your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spiritual day. God is your refuge. He's your strength. He is your ayim.